can you solve this viral geometry challenge? Here's the question. Given the square, let's draw some segments inside the square like this. Now, the measure of the segment must be equal to 4 units and the measure of the segment must be equal to 5 units. Now, the question is what is the area of the square? Now, you can pause this video if you want to give this problem a try. And now, let's answer this question together. Alright, so given this figure, our goal is to solve for the area of this square. Now, I have here three suggested solutions to answer this kind of question. So the first one, we can use trigonometry. The second one is we can use Pythagorean theorem because take note that we have here a lot of right triangles. And the third one, and my favorite, is the rotation of objects. In this solution, you can solve this problem without computation. Alright, so let's start with our first strategy or first suggested solution, which is using trigonometry. Now, let's begin. Let's call this angle right here alpha. And this angle right here must be equal to beta. Now, take note that alpha plus beta must be equal to 90 degrees because it is the acute angles of a right triangle. Now, since we know that alpha plus beta equals 90 degrees and this corner right here is a 90 degrees, if this is beta, the other angle must be equal to alpha. Alright, because alpha plus beta equals 90 degrees. Now, let x be the side length of the square. Now, since it is a square, Therefore, all of its side must be equal to x. Now, using this right triangle, we have alpha, x, and 4. We can relate this using sine function. So we can get the sine of alpha must be equal to 4 over x, or the opposite side of the angle over the hypotenuse, which is 4 over x. Now, on this right triangle, we can get the cosine of alpha using x and 5 because cosine of alpha must be equal to its adjacent side which is 5 over its hypotenuse which is x. So cosine of alpha must be equal to 5 over x. Now take note of this identity, the Pythagorean identity. We have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So we can say that sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha equals 1. And we know the value of sine alpha and cosine alpha. This is just 4 over x and 5 over x. So we can substitute that in. So if we do that, we get something like 4 over x raised to the power of 2 or simply sine alpha plus 5 over x raised to the power of 2 or simply the cosine of alpha. Now let's focus on this equation. 4 over x raised to the power of 2, this is just 16 over x squared. And 5 over x raised to the power of 2, this is just 25 x squared. Now, to get rid of this denominator x squared, let's multiply all of this term by x squared. If we do that, we get something like 16 plus 25 equals x squared. Now, this is very simple. 16 plus 25, this will give us 41. Now, take note that the side length of the square is x. Therefore, its area equals x squared and we get that x squared equals 41. Therefore, the area of the square must be equal to 41 square units. And that is the answer using trigonometry. Now, how about using the Pythagorean theorem? So, how do we use the Pythagorean theorem in this kind of situation? So, let's do that. Now, Again, let's call this alpha, this is beta, we know this is alpha, and sure enough, this angle right here is also beta. Now, let x again be the side length of the square, and using the angle side angle postulate, we can say that these two right triangles must be congruent to one another because we have here alpha x and beta and on this right triangle we have alpha again x and beta so a as a postulate holds true so these two right triangles are congruent 
Therefore, we can say that the length of this side right here, the longer leg of this right triangle, must be equal to just 5 units. Now, let's focus on this right triangle right here. And then, let's apply the Pythagorean theorem. So, we have the side length 4, 5, and x. So, we have x squared equals 5 squared plus 4 squared. And 5 squared is 25, 4 squared must be equal to 16. And 25 plus 16, again, we get a value of 41. And again, that is the area of the square we got a while ago. So, the area of the square is totally 41 square units. Now, how about our third solution, which is the rotation of objects? So, let's start our third solution. Of course, what object do we need to rotate? And the answer is the right triangle. Now, before we rotate this right triangle, take note that these two right triangles are congruent to each other. Therefore, we can say that this side length, this side right here, must be also equal to 4. So, let's do that. And then, let's rotate this right triangle right here. So, rotate on the first rotation. This is our second rotation. And this is our last rotation. Now, take note. The area of a right triangle can be computed using this formula, 1 half times base times height. Now, since it is a right triangle with the height of 5 units and the base 4 units, so the area must be equal to 1 half times 5 times 4. 5 times 4 is 20 divided by 2. This will give us 10. So the area of one right triangle must be equal to 10 square units. So the other right triangle must be equal to also 10 square units because they are congruent. So the third right triangle is 10 square units also and the fourth one is 10 square units also. Now, let's focus on the small square inside of our figure. Now the question, what is the side length of this square? Now take note, this length right here must be equal to 4 units. So from here up to this point. Now if we extend this, this becomes 5 units. Therefore we can say that the side length of this square must be equal to 1 unit. So all of its side must be equal to 1 unit. And the area of this small square must be equal to 1 square units. Therefore, the area of this square must be equal to 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 1 or simply equal to 41 square units. And that is our answer to this question. And as always, we are done.